Welcome to the Hermitage in Leningrad. I'm Thomas Hoving. The more I travel the world of museums, the more I'm excited and invigorated by this place. I like particularly the way the flavor of a palace has been maintained. All that gold, that marble, those chandeliers shining away. I like the way the works of art have been forced into that royal background instead of being made neutral or bland or clinical as they are in some Western museums. I like the admixture and the juxtaposition of styles. You have European paintings, furniture, decorative arts of great stature, bought early on, possibly because of an inferiority complex. The early czars wanted to look as good as the courts of France and Vienna. But alongside that is the indigenous stuff, the heartland. These are the wild, barbaric, primitive artifacts found in archaeological excavations of the nomad tribes that were here from the beginning and swept Europe since the beginning of time and long before Christ. I like the way these things have been blended together. I like also the way this place is enormous. It's labyrinthine. You can get lost in here. You always leave feeling there's something I must have missed. Now, is it possible to see everything in the Hermitage? Probably not. But I'm going to show you the absolute cream of the cream. After the war, the archaeological division carried out one of the most difficult digs in all of history, South Siberia in the high Altai Mountains. Everything was frozen all the time. And in the permafrost, they found the tomb of a chieftain of a nomad tribe of the 5th century BC, surrounded by his royal artifacts, such things as felt tapestries and magnificent accoutrements for the horses. His body was found deep within a log tomb virtually intact. I'm standing in a unique place in the world of museums, the antechamber to what is perhaps the most precious and carefully guarded series of rooms anywhere, the gold treasury of the Hermitage. Entry is by appointment only. Well, here we are in the fabulous gold treasury of the Hermitage, and if you get in here, consider yourself very fortunate. 
It's like being in uh, Fort Knox and the Louvre at the very same time. There are literally thousands of pieces of the most beautiful gold, 24 karat gold, made in all of antiquity, dating 7th century, 6th, 5th century, 4th century BC. For those who don't mind blunt statements, here's one. There is no more beautiful case in any museum in the world than this. Dozens of solid gold objects from the tribes of the Scythians on the top an extraordinary net sort of a thing that must have gone over the shoulders of some extraordinary character. And there's there the remnants of a scabbard for a sword uh, right up there. And this beautiful plate, and what it is is actually what is called a patera. And it's shaped in a special way that you put your fingers on it, you put a bit of wine in it, and you spill some wine in uh, expiation and in thanks to the gods. It's kind of a toast to the gods before you have a ritual drink yourself. I think one of the most beautiful things that has ever come out of the Greek civilization, and that includes some of the sculptures of the Parthenon by Phidias himself, are the people and the horses in this gold comb. It is solid gold and it shows uh, various warriors, Scythians in their long uh, 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 dress, fighting a, a Greek or uh, somebody, an enemy on, on horseback. And the poignancy of it and the extraordinary uh, sense of the vitality of the horses and the, the, the fear of battle is all there in this very tiny piece of gold uh, carving. Another motif that goes through everything here is the horse because they lived by the horse. They would actually on the road put a little straw in the vein of a horse's neck and get another day of sustenance out of that. They would actually drink the blood of the horse. Uh, they rode them into battle. Uh, they worshipped them. They brought them up. They broke them so that they would be uh, perfectly trained beasts. So the horse is the, the motif that is everywhere as the very beginning of the highest form of civilization. It's more than gold. It is uh, really part of humanity itself. Another motif, which is the evil symbol, and that is the griffin. And the griffin is this winged dragon with great claws and a great beak looking like an eagle, which in some of the representations are trying to, to devour the horses. So it's a continual struggle between the horse, them, the Scythians, and this evil griffin. It's accurate to say that no museum has a more diverse collection of Peter Paul Rubens. It's marvelous to compare Rubens with Van Dyck. Van Dyck, lofty, elegant, polite. Rubens, earthy, wild, even violent, paint like a stormy surface. Dramatic heroes, voluptuous heroines. Here's a supreme example. Perseus has just saved Andromeda from the dragon. The absolute law of the universe is unfortunately that everything gets old and everything changes. Varnish yellows, paint fades, canvas frays, wood begins to crack, and the job of every conservation